Hi, welcome to this new episode. In the last episode, we worked on the enemy attack class. So in this episode, we'll be looking at continuing that attacking as long as the player remains within this collision zone. So to do that, we're going to have to make a change to our check if player. So we're going to go into the enemy attack class and go to my check if player. I'm going to left click on the start node and go to output. I'm going to use a boolean and I'm going to put is player. And I will use that return node after check can attack and on cast failed. So I'm going to add another local variable, which is also a boolean, which we can call actor was player. And we'll use that as the setting. If it's cast to the first person character, then we know the actor was the player. But we also want to know if they can attack. Because what we're going to do is on enemy character 1, when we compile this, you'll see we have a boolean value here, and we're going to check using a branch if it is the player and we can attack, so then we'll set our state to attacking. So what that means is that although this is the player, we also want to know if we can attack, so we can have an output here. So we'll need a local var variable, enemy can attack. Plug that into the return node. We'll set it on true. And on false, we will set it to false. Even though it's a local variable, so it will be destroyed and remade every time this is called, we'll just do that for good measure. And then on check if player, And we'll check can attack. We'll use that value as is player. Otherwise, if cast fails, we'll set this to false. And we'll set can attack to act towards player. So act towards player, we will then use as is player. So what's this doing? This is going, okay, if we've casted to the player, and we can attack, then we're going to say the actor is the player. Otherwise, we're just going to say it's not the player. So on can attack, if it's true, then actor was player would now be set to true, and we can then attack that player. Otherwise, it will be set to false, and just like if the cast fails, so it's not the player, we can't attack because it's not the player. So what we're going to do is going to do a branch statement, and on is player, that will be our condition. If it's true, we'll set our enemy state to attacking. And if it's false, then just for good measure, we'll set our attack to alive. We'll set our state, sorry, to alive. And that will just find the player for the alive state. Now on every tick, we're going to check what our state is. So I'm going to get my enemy state and do equal enum which is down here, and check if it's equal to attacking. We'll use a branch statement, which is B and left click, using that as our condition. And if it's true, then we'll check we can attack. And if it's false, we will do nothing. And we'll use that attack time as our last attack. So the reason we're doing this is that once the player collides with this collision component here, we're going to check if it's the player. If it is the player, then we're going to check if we can attack the player. So if we can attack the player, then we will attack the player, which means our enemy state should be attacking. So once the player has, once the enemy has attacked us, it's going to go back through all this to return enemy can attack as true. So then it will come out here as true. The actor was the player will be set to true, and then we'll return that true back to our enemy character here, which will then set our state into attacking. Now, we're going to see what happens when the player leaves. So on our attack radius, we want on component end overlap. And we're going to want to check if this is the player. Now, because our enemy attack class checks if we can attack if the player is in range, then we're going to want another one to check if player 
is out of range. So we can do this in our attack class and we can do check player left. And it's just going to be like this. We're going to take the cast first person character using our other actor as our actor reference, which we need to search for. And we'll use that as our object. And if it is the character, then we're going to want to return a boolean true. So we'll need is player output as a boolean, which will use a local variable of has player left, which will have a default value of false. If the cast succeeds, we'll turn that to true. If it fails, we'll turn that to false. And both will go into the return node and will return whatever value has player left had. And then we can call check player left using other actor as our other actor. And using another branch, we'll check if it was the player. So if it is the player on true, we want to set our enemy state to alive. And this means that we will no longer attack that player when we leave. Okay, as you can see, there is a bit of a warning here. And what it's doing is it's not registering, I think, the update of the enemy attack class. So to fix it, you just need to delete the references to it, drag it back in and plug it into the targets of the ones that aren't working. And there we go, it's sorted. And we're not going to do anything with that boolean value here, because it doesn't need it. So now the enemy can attack us as long as we stay within range of its attack radius. In the next video, we'll be looking at creating some simple navigation AI for our enemy so that they can follow the player wherever they go. And we'll look at also how to optimize that by stating how often we should update it. So I hope to see you in the next video. If you give, like the video, give it a like. If you disliked it, give it a dislike. Subscribe to see more. Thanks, guys. Bye.